Greetings everyone, and welcome to Troy, a Total War Saga. My name is Greg, and today we will be looking at a campaign as Paris on Legendary Difficulty. We'll click on the Trojans here and select Paris, the a Prince lover, of Troy. Not a fighter. So we have here as the campaign difficulty selected as legendary, which automatically locks the battle difficulty to veteran. Gonna switch this to minimal just because I'm not really gonna need the advisor help and keep battle time at 40 minutes as 60 tends to be a bit too long. We can look at our victory conditions here. There's two options, the Total War Victory, which is we set to defeat our first antagonistic faction, then occupy, raise, or sack 100 different settlements. And then we have to control the following three settlements, Troy, Mycenae, and Gnosis. With the Homeric Victory being, to complete all the steps of our hero's epic mission chain, of which there are 12. And then we have to make sure that these three factions are destroyed or confederated, as well as having 600 favor with Aphrodite. The way that favor works and how it decays by 10 each turn can make maintaining favor difficult, so we'll have to, if we go for this victory, really focus in on getting favor with Aphrodite. We will go into our faction-specific play style once we get into the campaign here, so let's go ahead and start to protect our beloved. Are we mere playthings of the gods? Or do we plead divine influence to justify our foolish choices? He's taken her! He's taken my wife! You've risked the safety of Troy. Troy is my home now. You have my oath, brother. She will be returned to you. Brother, I can fight. Go. Seek shelter. There'll be plenty of fighting ahead. The wrath of Achaea will descend upon Troy. Paris acted in love, but he has incited war. Whether the walls of Ilios will endure, only the gods can tell. Magnificent Paris. Menelaus of Sparta is devoured by rage after you eloped with his wife, Helen. Paris of Troy must pay! War will surely follow. As you sail homewards with Helen, away from the turbulent clouds gathering in the west, you consider the reaction of your brother, Hector. Brother. Your foolish passion has doomed us. You rule over Troad from your mighty citadel, where fair Helen can gaze out over the wine-dark sea. The rich eastern lands are beyond the reach of the Achaeans. Your brother Hector guards Troy's approaches. On the southern coast of Troad, an Aeolian king has secured a foothold on Trojan soil 
and now awaits Achaean reinforcements. This dangerous invader ravages the land from his base on Lesbos. In the north, the Pelasgian stronghold could be a useful ally. On the nearby western islands, your god-touched brother Troilos protects the coast in the name of your father, King Priam. Your kinsman Aeneas holds the Hellespont for Troy. Fear not, noble cousins. I stand with you. Hold on to your love for your father, your family, and your wife. Draw on that strength to repel the enemies of Troy. All right, so for Paris, as part of our faction, we have to deal with Priam's heir and then Helen, my love. For Helen and Paris, we have to keep them together because that's going to make them happy, which is going to give different buffs if they are away for four turns. It becomes gloomy with a hit to happiness, and then Paris will have negative morale for all units under his command. And then after another four turns, becomes negative 10 happiness, but this time faction-wide. So the boost to both growth and happiness really makes it so that you want to keep both of them happy as often as possible. And then to make sure that Paris and Helen are you are kept together, you can use one of these three here. A grand feast, demonstration of skill, and gathering for prayer. All settlements cannot do all three. You have to have a military building for this, and then a temple for this one. So each one gives a different benefit. So grand feast is for Population growth, influence, and influence over adjacent provinces. Demonstration of skill. Minus 20% recruitment cost. And 700 experience of all units per turn. With the gathering prepare for happiness and additional favor from the rituals that your priestesses can do. So with Paris being happy and... Helen being happy, he gets 8% to morale of all units, and minus 15% to the upkeep cost of all units. Considering how high upkeep costs can get, we definitely want that in order to help keep the strain on our resources as low as we can get. That brings up the first mission here, to defeat the enemy. We have to defeat an army belonging to... The faction of Macaria. And we have one right down here. Not a chance. Don't waver now. So the balance of power is in our favor as we outnumber this enemy army. And we have our Trojan Nobles, which are solid archery units. Although our Militia Warband and Trojan Warriors aren't particularly strong. It's worth it to manually fight this battle just to get adjusted to the combat style in Troy. I'm just going to auto-resolve as it's just going to be a decisive victory. Teach them a lesson. So 
So we receive some food, some experience. Plus a chunk of soldiers, but it'll be okay. We can just go ahead here and do Liza's barter for some more food in our treasury. Let them go free. Greatness is acknowledged. I knew I had it in me. So that completes our first mission here. The reward of 250 food, 80 bronze. And that issues the second mission here to muster the troops. Maintain 12 units in total. And with that victory over the Makarian army, we received two of Priam's Benevolence. As part of Priam's heir, we have to compete with our brother Hector for our father Priam's favor. So for Paris, his progress is on the right side of this pillar. Hector is on the left. And so we have to... as we make headway into some of these here, as well as Priam's whims to gain benevolence. At 100, 200, and 300, you receive a permanent boon as well as a high-ranking hero. And then at 400, you'll be able to confederate both Troy and Hector. Which is nice, that way you don't have to worry about benevolence anymore but it can also be a disadvantage because once you confederate and get their armies then it's quite possible that you will be negative in terms of food and probably even bronze so some preparation has to be done ahead of time before you confederate Troy and Hector So this left side includes the ways that we can gain benevolence. We got plus two from defeating a common enemy of ourselves and Hector, Makaria. And then one that ends up being easy for our initial province is just to produce over 400 food and have over 20 happiness. In a few turns, we'll receive our first uh, Priam's Whims, which can be anything from killing a specific enemy hero to capturing a settlement or building an altar. We have earned this. Paris of Troy. With the Makarian army out of the way, we can colonize the settlement here. Make it count. Uses up some of our resources, as well as some of our soldiers. Take over the city. But it's still worth it, so that way we control this entire province. Paris is now ranked 2. And that gives us our first choice of two options in his skill tree. We have Centaur Drill, which allows him to fire while on the move. And then we also have Cheat Hades, which gives damage resistance as well as speed. We won't be getting a mount for a while and with it being on legendary difficulty I like to just go ahead and get cheat Hades here he's primarily a ranged character but there'll be times when you get 
up close and personal with another enemy hero. So just being able to use this, either it's for the speed boost or for just the damage resistance. The plus 25% speed boost can be useful, so Centaur Drill is still a good enough first ability. Well, it doesn't really help early on, but since early game isn't too difficult, you can always just skip Cheat Hades and go for Centaur Drill, which will probably be a little bit better later on in the campaign. So now we can go ahead and issue our first royal decree. We start off with plus 100 wood per turn and plus 90 bronze per turn. So we have these that are currently open to us. I like to go for the plus 280 food per turn as food is always going to be useful for us. And then depending on how these first 10 to 15 turns go, I might just go for the gold here. We currently are getting five. Five per turn, so a nice boost of another 20. Or make my way down here for the reduction to action costs for agents, and then plus three to recruit ranks, just to get higher level agents quicker. We have two options of building right now. We can go ahead and upgrade this to a forest village or construct a building here. It's better to hold off and do this on the next turn to complete another mission. So we'll go here and do arable land. This way we can get our food above 400 to receive 10 of Priam's benevolence. And since we have high influence, which is influence above 60%, we'll receive the bonus 80 food per turn to get 140. In our divine will screen here, dealing with our seven gods that we can pray to and get favor from, we can use Hecatomb here to gain a chunk of favor or pray to the gods. And each one is going to have a different benefit for doing so. For this first turn, I like to do Hecatomb on Aphrodite, which will bring us up to Respected, which will give us plus 10 to diplomatic relations with all factions, and then plus 200% to the effects of organized games. We will feast well. Since we now control an entire province, we can issue a commandment. So we'll be doing organized games. So we'll receive that benefit for a few turns. And then to go along with the plus 10 to diplomatic relations. We'll go ahead and pray the Zeus, which will give us plus five to deal evaluations for all diplomatic agreements. I raise my voice in prayer to you. A prayer takes a turn to be active, so we will go into the diplomacy screen on the next turn.
commandments are down here. So we'll go to organize games. Which will give us some happiness as well as growth. And then since this settlement has a building here, Helen's house, the cost for a feast is reduced, so it ends up being free. So we can go ahead and send that invitation right now at the start to further get 75 the growth, 10 influence, and influence over adjacent provinces. That puts it on cooldown for six turns, so we'll just have to wait until then, and then we can either keep a Grand Feast or switch it over to Demonstration of Skill for Recruitment Cost and Experience. Divine judge. And finally, we can make progress on our next mission here. We don't have a whole lot of food, so we can just get two units. No argument here. I'll be going for two light skirmishers. Use them to flank troops. Their range is only 100, but they do have some armor-piercing damage. So they are useful for... Attacking from the sides and behind enemy troops. And that'll push to nine troops. And then we can do three more on the next turn. Let's so that do. will finish up our first turn. So let's go ahead and end this one. So Hector just received two of Priam's Benevolence. Nothing we can do about that. He's just going to continue to gain some on each and every turn. And here we have another mission, a thriving settlement. So that is why we did not upgrade this settlement up on the previous turn. And we also have a King's Decree to issue a royal decree, which we already have started, and just have to wait six more turns for it to complete. And now our commandment is issued, and we can see the benefits from it. We can go ahead and do that now, and complete that mission on the following turn. With charm and skill. And we'll move Paris up here so that way he can be reunited with Helen. And before we recruit our soldiers, we'll go up here to diplomacy. With the plus five from Zeus, there are plenty of non aggression packs, military access, defensive and military alliances that we can work out. We can also interact with a couple of the Greek factions. Even though they will likely declare war on us in the near future, I still like doing this early on because we'll be able to get some resources from them. And it's usually them who will declare war on us. So they will be breaking the non-aggression pact compared to us doing it.
And then there's this decision that we kind of have to make if we want to ally with this guy here or eventually break the military access pact that we have and defeat his army in order to take this provincial capital. I will be having him be my ally just because he can be helpful for, depending on what Makaria does, sometimes they'll just send a small force close to your land and you'll be able to just go down here and defeat it and then stay down here and take one and then eventually the other. But sometimes they'll build up a fairly large force and they have harpies in both settlements. I think this one starts off with a the building that you need, and then this one they eventually build it. And harpies end up being pretty good units this early on, and they can cause trouble for some of yours. So if done right, he doesn't always he doesn't like to capture a territory. So as long as you're kind of close, he'll go attack it and then you'll just reinforce him and then he will either just head back into his territory or sack it and then head back but either way you'll be able to just go ahead then and walk in and take the settlement so i'm gonna go through the all the diplomatic options that we have and just Fast forward until the end here, just because this is going to take take a little bit of time. It can take like 10 to 15 minutes to go through and do all of these because of barter agreements to figure out what's the best way to fill up our lowish amount of a few of these resources. Okay, so now with that all done... Grace and Our economy is looking better. And so now we will go ahead and recruit three more units. Perfectly clear. All right, so that will end our second turn. And then we'll complete both of these missions on the next one. Muster the troops is now complete. Plus 300 food and 100 bronze. And a thriving settlement. 750 wood and 500 stone. And with the completion of arable land, we get 10 benevolence from having over five or 400 food. And we'll get another 10 on the next turn because happiness will be above 20. So we will use this construction slot for a logger's tent. All the rest of these have some sort of drawback. This is just expensive to build. 660 stone. Since we are still recruiting some units, we're going to get another mission to have 20 units coming up. So since a few of those would be archers, this would be okay to get the plus 4 to ammunition. I just prefer going for this, as we get more wood per turn. 
I take what I will. And some of these units will eventually just be getting rid of once we unlock higher tier units. So we can worry about getting the ammunition for them later. We receive one more population surplus point on the next turn, and then we'll be able to upgrade one of these two up to a citadel, or not citadel, but to the tier three for a settlement. So Makaria is moving a fleet around here. Prince of Troy. But of course. So we'll get up to 15, see where they move. Because that should mean that one of these two is open, and with 15 units, we should be okay to go ahead and capture them. Eight units in this garrison, ten in this one. I would prefer to take this one for the stone, so we start getting that. Uh, this one only has three buildings, so it might not be upgraded yet, so they won't have harpies. Doesn't look like arrows. Can't tell. I prefer for them to build it, so that way we don't have to race, waste the resources on it. Blessed by beauteous Aphrodite. Have some. Perhaps you expect to charm me. Bronze, I can go ahead and take. Military access. With all of them. Okay, let's go ahead and just do single barter. Oh wow, okay. I want to do that. Really not worth it. 17 food. In that case, it's better to do the bronze. Or bronze. I will. Ah, uh, they're in the red with these, so I'm not gonna bother. And same thing. They tend to be at odds with Dardania. I'm ready to talk. I 
And I'll just focus on stone. Alright, it's just six gold. Prince Paris. Yes, right, we can do one more single barter with him. All right, take all your gold. Just check with them yes, last and talk. see if I can get them to join the war. Nope, they don't want to do that. I'll just stay in a defensive alliance with them for now. Time to see where they're going to move to, so I know, or at least can start the plan where I'm going to move Paris's army on the next turn. Because of the decay in favor each turn, our cult level with Aphrodite has decreased, so we're no longer respected. So that's down to 43. So we're no longer getting the bonus from diplomatic relations or from the effects of organized games. So that's now down to plus 2 happiness and plus 10 growth. Still useful right now just to keep the happiness level high as well as increase our population growth. And with that, we are now at a surplus of two. So we can upgrade one of these two here. Both are useful for upcoming missions that will be issued. The first is a Shining City, which is to upgrade a settlement building to its maximum rank, which we can do here. And then on the next turn, we also get the first of Priam's Whims. And for the first one, it tends to be to build an altar to a specific god. So if we upgrade to a citadel, we unlock two more construction slots. And we can use one of those to build an altar. Completing a Shining City unlocks a unit of Trojan nobles that we'll be able to recruit. So I kind of like doing that more as we'll just get another two population surplus in two turns. So it's not a big delay waiting to do this. You'll still have enough time to upgrade this and build the altar before the eight turns that you're giving are up. Alright, so we're going to move Paris down here, still get a little bit of replenishment, then we're going to attack this settlement.
We have three turns for Helen, my love. Fair Paris. So we'll take that and then wait, so that way we can send her here without taking a hit to happiness or to the morale of his army. Alright, and here we are. Priam's whim for the gods. So we have to construct an altar of Aphrodite. In eight turns for 10 Priam's Benevolence. Maximum strength. Start a turn with 20 units in a single army. So we just need five more. And the Shining City. Upgrade any settlement building to its maximum level. Which will reward us with an elite unit. Which is unit of Trojan Nobles. With charm and skill. So we've got that started. One more turn and then we'll be able to upgrade this one. So in the meantime, we'll upgrade this for some more food. Prince Paris. Troy must be getting desperate. Wish I could do. Let's talk things over while we can. We'll just do these non aggression packs with these two. Just uh, do a barter agreement with them. This faction usually ends up at war with Dardania, at least that I've found. And if I don't do anything with this one, they tend to. Declare war on me. Which isn't too bad, it's just. It kind of messes with the flow of the way that I play the early game. Neutral heading into the red, so no point really having military access. They're not going to re remain friendly for long. Especially with. They start up war with them and made peace already. But Hector will likely be at war with them soon. Alright, so I can get him into an alliance. Just to help with Makaria taking that final settlement. But I'm going to hold off on doing that. Even though this is the last turn of the buff from the Prayer of the Zeus. Alright, so we got 4, 13, the 15. Ruin their day. I got enough harpies here. Destroy the foe. So 
the one thing I'm not sure why is happening right now. But it shows here. Bronze Workshop at level 2, 1 and 1. But once I attack and defeat them, this is just going to be a rank 1 Bronze Workshop. So it's like it's, even though occupying is actually counting as sacking almost right now. This will hurt. Uh, I don't want fog. Dry, that's fine. We're just going to back up some here, use this forest in order to hide these skirmishers. So that way they can flank. skirmish on these two. Just want them to stay here and then if they get attacked in melee, they are pretty good to start off with, so they'll be fine. They can still retreat. And then these warriors will also flank. I need to get him away from these units, just so I can make sure I always hit him. Alright, that should be good enough. Got this damage resistance here, since he's also an archer. Artemis and Your hero resistance. is under attack. All right, just a couple more shots. Hope they're gonna attack me. Alright, let's back up. So I've won that trade there. Alright, and there's the harpies. I want them to stay in front so I can hit them with my archers. They're the most dangerous unit, so glad they're up here first. Alright, just move Paris a little bit more. 
Not slingers are there. All right, they're broken. The foe has shited your hidden units. Flank, there's a militia here. Alright, now you guys can retreat. Let's finish off this archer. Your warriors are losing heart. Spears, that was my... Oh, wow, they're the ones broken. Hades right, has claimed enough. the All right, there we go, victory. Size of victory, 174. That's okay. 130 captured. Experience food, bronze and gold. We'll go ahead and occupy here. Greatness is acknowledged. All right, that's enough for Paris to now be rank three. Paris of Troy. So now we have Hand of Artemis and Heavy Bow. So that gives us 20% ranged armor piercing versus 20% missile damage. Get some range with that upgrade as well. But I still think I like the armor piercing damage more. Helps more against enemy heroes, and then later on, we fight more heavily armored troops. Blessed by beauteous Aphrodite. And there it is. Now it's only a rank one settlement instead of rank two. We need six turns for a population surplus before we can convert one in order to get harpies. Alright, we've got this secured now. Now we just need to take this one. I'm gonna try and get him to help out. Princely might. That's two turns. So I can either wait here to make sure that neither of them become gloomy. Yeah, I need the wait, the two turns. Because then I don't want this province to take the 
negative six the happiness. Still at 7.3. All for love. And three turns. Prince of Troy. Do one of those for now. Puts me at 16. And everyone will get a little bit of experience from just sitting here. Continue here, upgrade to the Citadel. There in love and war. All right, just one more turn the way here. Paris of Troy. Perfectly clear. I take what I will. All right, so now that he's gloomy, so I need to move Helen here. This place is going to use a little bit of growth, so we'll do a grand feast. And then we can hold off on that till we're ready to recruit some better units. That way we have a lower recruitment cost and then everyone will get more experience once we do. By beauteous Aphrodite. All right, he's getting ready to move. Grace and style. And this should have been enough for this. With charm and skill. Looks like Hector is getting ready to head over here. Noble Paris. I just gotta remain here for one more turn. Thank you. 
fair in love and war. Okay, and then on the next turn... Military Alliance, only 4.4. I should be able to still do that on the next turn, and then have his army come down to help me. Which should beat Hector to here. Our first Royal Decree has been issued. Now we just got a reward of 150 food and 150 wood, as well as the Shining City. Which now gives us our first epic mission here, the Maiden of Ida. So we need to move Paris up to here, which will give us the Honorable Prince, which gives happiness, which we can definitely use as well as diplomatic relations with Pelasgians, and some experience for Paris. Okay, that's what we're waiting for. He's happy again. Paris of Troy. So he went to war and then got absolutely crushed. Great job. Paris will get a sympathetic hearing from me. Alright, we'll just go ahead and take basically all your stuff. If Hector's gonna move his army, then I'm gonna go ahead and let him do it. Forward, everyone. See if he can't weaken them a bit. Probably gonna need this army. Or these units here. Alright, let's see what happens. Set the trap. I ambush. I wanna draw this eleven unit army out. So hopefully they do that rather than abandoning it the sail to my territory. So we're getting the food, so now we're gonna go for the gold here. Get bronze here, stones here once we take it. Hector better not win. I take what I will.
Okay, so the ambush failed, but I can still attack, and I get Hector to reinforce me. That's why I take out their larger army, which includes Harpies. I'm gonna try and let Hector take the brunt of the fighting, as he has better infantry than I do. And then just let my archers take out a lot of them. And their generals on this side. Reinforcements over here. So we're just going to back up. skirmishers over here. So if they come down this way to fight my infantry, let's bring a trap and attack from the flank. And if their general's over here, Paris will be over here to bait them. Reinforcements from your ally have arrived. Victory is close enough to taste. Alright, I'll just keep my infantry back. Let the archers go, let the skirmishers go. Young Spears, they don't have shields. They should be fine. Javelins, Harpies are over there. Your ally is being attacked. He's running. Just these harpies that aren't. And young spears, but they should retreat soon. Still want to kill as many of them as I can. Alright, use that for the extra speed. Make sure I chase him down. Alright, general enemy. down. Now, 
let's speed this up. Looks like they should catch that unit. That one's gone. Alright, don't think I'm going to catch anything else. Alright, nice. Got 900. Usually I only get 5. Treasury, morale. Don't need the replenishment. Morale might be somewhat helpful for taking that final settlement. Here we have Thirst for Conquest, to main con maintain control of one province, which we already have. So that should complete right after this. Yep, mission successful. All right, easy 700 wood. Now we have Royal Commandment, to issue a commandment across one province, which we already are doing, so that will complete on the next turn. Okay, just one more turn for the Citadel. And I don't really want to lose the growth. Or happiness. Even though that is a nice amount of wood per turn. What I'll probably end up doing is... Getting rid of Helen's house, putting it here. And putting a military building there. So that way once I finish this up, head up here and then go back. I'll be able to upgrade some of his weaker units. We'll just upgrade this for now. Ah, uh, this gives growth, so I might just use that to cancel out in case I eventually switch that. 50 food, plus 2 to all resources, and another 10 growth.
Prince Paris. This will hurt. That will never work. That's right, a garrison of nine plus three. Easy enough. Blessed by beauteous Aphrodite. Teach them a lesson. So bowmen, slingers, harpies. It's an okay infantry. Still outnumber them. Kind of nice if I could funnel them through here. Let's keep them over there. So I'll keep two of them here to help hold this and then send two around. So they'll head around, these ones will stay to guard here. Eh, not gonna have time. All right. Indeed, sir. Slingers, bowmen. Yes, I shall. Troy. Enjoy your final. Troy. Your warriors have spotted hidden foes. Harpies. All right. For the harpies, javelin throwers. Warriors are losing heart. All right, forget about them. Harpies are more dangerous. Warriors have been routed. Alright, you archers switch to the harpies. Alright, Paris, I need you over here.
Die, Ares! Your warriors are rallying! Alright, archers. Let's get these Victory javelins. Is close enough to taste. Come on, Paris, you gotta hit this. Alright, they're breaking. Let's get this guy. Oh my gosh, I haven't hurt this guy at all, it seems like. Finally shattered. There we go. One of your units has no more ammunition. Not quite how I wanted that engagement to go. Lost a few too many compared to what I wanted. Just those harpies have strong attack, and then they also cause loss of morale. So that left flank of mine just collapsed. And Paris couldn't actually hit anyone. Only had 40 kills. I grow in fame and skill. That's nice. X morale for siege battles. I don't usually starve out any enemies, but maybe with that minus one, it might help. Okay, now he's level four. Paris of Troy. Fatigue reduction. Formation specialist. Or at least this way they can get either Armor piercing damage, reload skill. Alright, we'll go for our formation specialist. Not a chance. Most handsome. That's beyond me. Prince Paris. Erasos. Is level two, so now I can get some harpies. Okay, so let's get an economic building. All right, that is going to be above sixty on the next turn. So I'll get the high influence bonus for the stone. With charm and skill. And now I'll finally have my full 20 unit army. I guess this Hector will take out them. 
If he doesn't, then I will, because I want the plus 10 benevolence from defeating a common enemy. But my guess is he will. It's at 33. I just need to get my happiness up, and then I'll gain some more. The returns, so I have more than enough time to head back over here, and then head up here. There we go. Royal Commandment has now been issued. And the mission is successful. 140 food. 100 wood. And maximum strength. 500 food. 50 bronze. 50 gold. Okay. Growing Influence, which we just completed on the last turn. As they are a military ally. So that will complete right here. We also have House of the Gods. So we already have that mission for the Altar of Aphrodite, which we'll begin constructing on this turn. So this will complete once the other one completes in two turns. So what I should have done on that last turn is attack that army there and then gone and taken this. That way I would have gotten 10 more benevolence, actually 12. 10 from wiping out Makaria, and then the extra 2 from defeating that army. Alright, Altar... Aphrodite... And then we'll also get a vineyard here that will upgrade to a winemaker in order to recruit a spy. Okay, and now I'm going to, I th think, I can either move this house over to here, it's just, this tends to be the location that enemies attack, so it can be useful to have a guardhouse here, so that way you have a larger garrison. So I may end up just getting rid of Helen's house, putting a military building here, and then putting a guardhouse here once I get my happiness up a little bit more, as it's still negative. Grace and style. Here we go. We'll march here to now. reunite the two of them, and then we'll head up here. of Troy. Stay garrison just so they replenish a little bit quicker. And this should take two turns to get there, two turns back. 
Unfortunately, not possible. And we have another trait for Paris, Firm Buffer, plus one to Happiness. Not a whole lot, but it'll help here. Princely Might. Alright, so Hector and Achilles are at war. Prince of Troy. Probably should get rid of this. I don't think it's too useful. But first, we'll just go ahead and start to move Paris. I'm assuming I can get onto the land from there. With charm and skill. Ah, land. Okay, so I just need one more turn, get there. Move her in two turns. So I'm at war with him right down here. So right now I'm thinking, complete this mission, head back. Then I'm going to get a beachhead here against Kaim. Then work my way down. So I should go ahead and I'll demolish the watchtower. And replace it with a different military building.
hmm. Let's see. Do you think this is necessary here to protect it? So that's a hit to happiness. Minus two. We'll get plus ten from here. As well as plus three from here. That's just to further protect this area. Since I'm going to be expanding through this way. I'm not going to have a second army for a bit still. I'll get rid of this one watchtower. Just keep it here, because I do want this to be... Probably should be more of an economic province, but since I already have some military buildings and the watchtower, I might do that instead. It is your capital. It does seem to be where enemies tend to sail to and attack you at. Probably keeping it more of a military province will make things safer in the long run. have a whole lot of wood, so I'll just hold off on building anything, let him move there, and complete these two on the next turn. And there we have, for the gods, 10 benevolence, house of the gods, 500 wood. Strengthening bonds. All right, so we're gonna have to try and get a defensive lines with them. And since we have that altar, now we can get an agent. Plus we have the vineyard. Oh, actually we have to upgrade to the winemaker before we get the spy. So we can recruit a priestess, we just won't just yet. We're going to switch this one to Apollo, which will give us Priam's Benevolence plus there he is, Apollo, and then he gives us plus two rank to Agents we recruit. It's expensive to rededicate, but I plan on just keeping Apollo here. And if you demolish, then you lose the favor that you've gained. I kind of want to just keep it with Aphrodite for now. And so we shall rededicate Apollo. We're towards this winemaker.
Helen's beloved. We're docking. And there we have that. So we get the plus 10 diplomatic relations with Pelasgians. So that should help with him. The extra happiness is going to be useful. And the experience lets us level him up. We've got reload skill. Missile damage or lower rage cost versus Ares' Thunder. So that's minus melee defense. So that just lets you shoot a whole lot faster versus Using us against other enemies to lower their melee defense, and here also their morale. So basically either picking off important targets quickly at the start of combat, or making them weaker in melee and routing them quicker. I'm going to go with this and then get the minus 10 morale upgrade to it. Fair Paris. All right, let's get you back here. Cut the waves. Soon enough. All right, it's plus 12. I'll be able to get that back to above 20. That's only plus 7. That's still going to take a while to get up. Take a look at how easily or difficult it will be. Minus eight. Minus 100. <laughs> okay. It is improving, so that should go up on the next turn. And then I can always do a barter with Zeus, getting an additional plus five to it. We are still behind Hector. But once we rededicate to Apollo, we'll get a nice chunk from that. And we'll be getting another 10 from that soon. Alright, we're going to stop it here for now. Made good progress. And now we just need to decide on the next moves as well as... Just strengthening the economy as well as happiness in our provinces. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this playthrough so far. And we'll pick up here in our next episode.